Wherefore, Series 3, Episode 3. Lars Huckington has the thighs of a god. He's not sure which god, but probably one of the muscly Greek ones. He has the thighs of a god and a state-of-the-art bicycle and the most ethical, sustainable delivery business in the district. His marketing campaign involves a lot of photos of him and his bike and his exceptional thighs. There are as many people hiring him for the sustainable angle as there are for the rear view, he is fairly sure. And that's fine by him. The world could use more joy and beauty in it, and this is just one of the many services he can perform with the power of his thighs. Early March is very cold, but he's wearing shorts and a closely fitting t-shirt. Even with an electric bike, the hills of Stroud are arduous and sweaty. His first job of the morning had him biking fresh bread from a local baker to a local cafe. Right now, the panniers on his bike and the trailer behind it are full of turnips. Not being much of a gardener himself, Lars is always happily surprised by the kinds of things that can be grown locally, especially in the winter. He's not quite sure what's going on with all these turnips, as the buyer is new, but that doesn't worry him. He's a happy-go-lucky, chilled-out kind of guy, and he doesn't overthink things. He just moves stuff around and admires the powerful perfection of his own thighs a lot. The address for the turnips is unfamiliar. Lias has been an enthusiastic cyclist for a lot longer than he's had a delivery service and he has a deep knowledge of lanes and cycle paths in about 20 mile radius. He couldn't even find this lane on a map, but there it is, exactly where the client said it would be, so that's totally fine. He wasn't expecting it to be a problem. Other people might have found the pickup arrangement a bit odd as well, but meeting on the side of the road to take turnips from the back of a donkey cart is just the sort of thing that happens around here. Stride is eccentric. Lyas himself is a manifestation of that eccentricity and he embraces it all enthusiastically. The lane is steep and Lyas takes a moment to appreciate what excellent shape he is in as he works the pedals hard and hefts his load up the track. Even the bumpy ground doesn't slow him down that much. The sack of turnips in his trailer is well secured. He's glad it wasn't a more delicate delivery. As he sweats his way up the hill, Lias tries to work out how this lane connects to the surrounding geography. He thinks about the many routes he has cycled, he considers the many views he has stopped to appreciate, and all the folds and corners in the valleys that you can't get a bike into. Where is this lane going? he wonders. He can't quite make it fit. It is important to note that Lars isn't from round here. He had a rather splendid and well-funded start in life, worked a few years in a well-paying job he hated and then took the plunge, left London and started building his dream life in Stroud. It is much easier to take that kind of wild leap of faith when you have money. It's easier to have a bold vision for a start-up if you don't have to worry about how you will afford to eat in the first year. This is the main reason why so many people doing soul-destroying, underpaid work do not take bold leaps into exciting self-employment options. A leap with no safety net can look an awful lot like suicide. Class politics aside, the other main implication of Lars not being from round here is that he has never heard a single Ditchley Yat story in his life. As far as he is concerned, there are five valleys and he is somewhere in them. You, of course, would have suspected for a while that something odd is going on here. You know the signs. You've probably also heard the saying about it being like taking turnips to Ditchley as an expression of pointlessness. Turnips have always been a major Ditchley export, along with beetroot wine and saintly relics. No one in their right mind takes turnips to Ditchley. But then Lias is just the delivery boy. It's not his deal. These are not his turnips, and he has no idea where he's going or what the folkloric implications might be. He's never once heard a story about someone going to market in Ditchley and thinking they bought a fine horse, but waking up the next day to find that the horse was really a fine sack of turnips all along. 
Those of you with superb memories for detail will remember the story of the chap who accidentally ended up in Ditchley with his own turnips which he could not sell and what happened to those turnips. Liars has been caught up in something a little bit like a magical scam. It's all rather clever. These are not Ditchley turnips in his trailer. He has a sack of perfectly adequate turnips grown by an enthusiastic couple who have a large garden in Charford. Ever since the What of Sapperton incident, there have been ongoing experiments into turnip magic and a system has been developed. As expected, Lyas meets his client in the lane. It turns out there's been a mistake and the client doesn't want the turnips from the panniers. Only the ones in the sack keep them, he says to Lyas. Good eating on those by the looks of it. The client removes the sack and drags it up the lane without further explanation. Lyas watches the sack as it bumps away and even though he's something of an underthinker, he can't imagine why anyone would treat their root vegetables so carelessly. For those of you who are wondering, the trick is to drag the sack into Ditchley and let it rest for at least an hour. It isn't necessary to drink beetroot wine while you wait, but on the other hand, why not? There are worst ways to pass the time if you want. Then you drag the sack out of Ditchley. It is not necessary for anyone to insult the quality of your root veg. At some point, you will find that you are not dragging the sack, but leading perhaps a cow or a horse. By this means, the people of Ditchley have been cheaply sourcing livestock for some time. They do also breed their own, but at this stage the beasts are so thoroughly interbred with vegetable animals that they are all closer to turnips than anything else. This in turn creates serious quandaries for would-be vegans. Lias takes his turnips home. Lias, of course, is a vegan. It is as well that he does not know that given the right opportunity, these turnips might have turned into a small pig. He would not be able to handle that kind of development at all. These turnips will only ever turn into a rather lovely soup. And no doubt, that is better for everyone involved. <laughs>